how do you know you're an artist? Hi, my name is Beatrice. I am a visual artist and I am starting out my YouTube journey. So I am inviting you today to join me while I paint and also we can discuss today a subject that was bugging me for the longest time. How do you know you're an artist? From a very young age, people told me that I am an artist. As I progressed in life and I started painting and drawing and my skills were getting better, I didn't felt anywhere close to being an artist. And why is that? Is just being skilled enough to call yourself an artist? Just a quick disclaimer here. Um, this is only my personal opinion, my personal journey. So it is not meant to be life advice. So just take it with a grain of salt. So in a dictionary, uh, the definition of the artist is a person who's doing uh, paintings or sketches or drawings or anything visual as a profession or as a hobby. So if that's the case, why did I felt out of place for such a long time in my life? To give you a quick uh, insight, <laughs> uh, I started painting as a hobby, although it was exhilarating at first. I noticed that I couldn't take any praise in my work. I wasn't I wasn't feeling good about what I create. I used to paint and what I mean by paint is that I was choosing images or inspiration photos from Pinterest or other artists and I would copy them. The outcome of these paintings would be very pleasing visually. People would um, acclaim my work and cheer me up and say wow you you got mad skills but I never took pride in this I, I felt like a fraud I felt like it was not my work because deep down I knew it wasn't about being skilled it was about letting myself be vulnerable and paint from the inside paint from what I was feeling and I wasn't doing that for the longest time, I felt like a fraud that I couldn't even accept people's compliments. I would always say, oh, this? No, I mean, this is just nothing. And the saddest part here was that I wasn't even questioning why I feel like that. I just thought it, it was just me, it's just the way I am. Most of the times I would create decorative art, which don't get me wrong, I, I still believe it's beautiful. I still like it, but it was not standing out, but rather it was just blending in with the room. And also for a long time, I thought that my ideas are not good enough. So that's the reason why many of my past canvases never met another pair of eyes other than my own. <laughs> Instead, they met other coats of painting just to cover what I deemed to be ugly. Andy Warhol says, they always say time changes things, but you actually have to change them yourself. That is so freaking true. Only when I started pushing myself to do things that scared me, not necessarily artistic things, did I begin to challenge myself to take action. Even if I was afraid, or I believe I couldn't do it. As I started to attend different art classes, I understood that I needed to step out of that fear mindset and of course try out new things. As time went by, I started showing people what I was creating and that was the point that something changed. I started to actually feel pride in what I was creating Something opened up. I felt like a fountain of ideas. I began to see improvement in my work and I still see improvement every day from one work to another, from one day to another. And I want to get better because there is nothing like that sweet smile of your client when they see their paint. 
it's amazing. One of my all-time favorite artists is Frida Kahlo. She is a renowned Mexican artist who is known for her self-portraits and her unique style that portrayed her physical and emotional pain. She believed that an artist should not be afraid to show their vulnerabilities and should be true to their own experiences and emotion. In her paintings, she often depicted physical pain, her struggles with infertility and her tumultuous relationship with her husband, Diego Rivera. Her art was an outlet for her to express her innermost feelings and to comfort the challenges she faced in her life. Back in the beginning of my art journey, I was constantly thinking of ways to express myself. So I started by doing, at first, body painting, henna tattoos, of course, painting on canvas, or many others <laughs> forms of expression from a form of blah, 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 blah. And I was constantly consumed by the desire to create something original. I believe body painting was my first form of expression, of artistic expression. I remember one time following a tutorial on YouTube, a girl was teaching how to do face painting for children. I was constantly afraid that what if I do that wrong? And I, I still remember the words. She was like, okay, why don't you start with a dot? And maybe another dot. And maybe another dot. And maybe a swirly line. And she made it feel so easy and that lesson stuck with me a really, really long time and I used it in many other cases, not only for face painting. And letting aside the fear of what if it looks ugly made my brain find new ways. As I look through the pictures of my past paintings, the pictures I still have because some of them I deleted. <laughs> some of the originals I completely destroyed. <sighs> but it doesn't matter now. I noticed that the mood of the paintings is changing while my mental health is changing, which is awesome to see. For example, there is a part of my life where I struggled with anxiety. And uh, the choice of color, the choice of theme that I was painting, it's accordingly. Even though I was only choosing inspiration from Pinterest or, or from other works, even those pictures I was choosing from artists that I could, I could relate to. I felt prey to the idea that all artists are suffering, which to be honest now, it was making me feel special back then. It was like a reassurance of, yes, I am a real artist. It is true that suffering can inspire artistic expression, but so is fear, so is anger, so is happiness. For those who experience pain, art can serve as a safe haven, allowing them to find and care for themselves. As Julia Cameron says in her book, The Artist's Way, art is born in attention, its midwife is detail. Art may seem to spring from pain, but perhaps that's because pain serves to focus our attention onto details. So when you feel like the pain gave you ideas, made you concentrate on what you were working, it's because a very strong feeling makes you focus better. And it doesn't have to be pain. Not all artists are suffering. But I understand now that this is a common and yet inaccurate belief that all artists must suffer. This myth may stem from the romanticization of the tortured artist archetype or from um, the tendency to focus on the struggles that famous artists have faced before. However, it is important to recognize that every individual's experience is unique. And there is no one-size-fits-all definition of what is an artist. Acknowledge that some, if some, acknowledge that it's important to acknowledge that. <laughs> it is also important to acknowledge 
that while some artists are struggling, may experience mental health issues or challenges, these struggles should not be glorified or romanticized. So back to my story now, along with exercising more and overall my health, my mental health getting better, I started to see all kinds of beauty around me and I realized that anything can make a good piece of art if you pass it through your personal filter, through your unique perspective of the world. I was constantly seeking out new and interesting works of experience. I still do this. After all, the desire to create is often fueled by love and appreciation for the works of others. Being an artist is about constantly pushing myself to grow and evolve. I always feel like I need to improve and I don't see the harm in that. I constantly, I am constantly experimenting with new techniques, materials and ideas and always looking for ways to push the boundaries. I believe that is the best way to grow. Right now, me embarking in this YouTube journey, opening up in front of the camera and pushing myself to learn a lot more because of course there is a lot more to learn like editing and marketing and posting and hashtags and all the stuff it is clearly taking me out of my comfort zone but looking back i know these are the times that i grow the most speaking of do you know something that is free and effortless and would help me a lot a subscribe yes and maybe a thumbs up if you like this content and if you have any thoughts you want to share with me feel free to leave them in the comments or if you want to contact me on any other social media i will leave the links also in the description area thank you so much for watching my video and until next time keep the inspiration flowing bye <laughs>